first day of Sexual Health Week, which is a time to raise awareness on safe sex practices and promote healthy consensual relationships. We have the owner and director of Calm Pixar Pittsburgh, Dana Kirkpatrick, back with us today. So good to see you again. Oh, thank you so much for having me again. It's this, exciting. This is great. And so uh, I think we should dive in first. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people probably know, but for those who don't, what is a sex therapist and, and what is your role in helping couples? So a sex therapist is a therapist first and foremost. So just like I was thinking about with you, like a journalist, right? You're a journalist and so is a sixth grader who's writing a paper, but right. it's very different what your journalists, you went to school, you study, you have press credentials. That's kind of what a sex therapist is a therapist first who is trained, licensed, and then we are specialized in sex. So there is no touching. I don't have sex with my clients um, at all. <laughs> and uh, I was joking, like a reassuring pat on the back, like that's it. Um, but really, a sex therapist, it, we, the other thing I like to clarify is we see a lot of people that are sexual minorities and or like myself, cancer survivors or diabetics who they don't want to be pathologized. So, you know, we have, say you have a couple that maybe they're a gay couple that they have neighbors that drive them crazy. Right. They can come to us and not, we don't have to, we're not going to be like, oh, what's it like to be, you know, we're, yeah. we're familiar with all of those things. We're familiar with every, um, we're not judgmental. So as far as couples, we do treat couples, but it's not predominantly couples. It's basically anyone who is struggling that wants to have, the way I define it is a lack of pleasure or a lack of consent. So a lot of couples we see, there's a lack of pleasure, whether it's like mutual pleasure or kind of like what you were talking about early on the top about things to do. I was thinking that's some of the things I tell couples to do. Have a tea party, bring joy and play back into your relationship. So in some ways I give people permission to do things like do that. that. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of sex mm -hmm. therapy 101. Yeah. Pleasure, yeah. consent, inclusivity. Yes. Yeah, so in, in being making sure that um, they have pleasure. We don't talk about, you know, there isn't a unified sex education in this country. We don't have, um, we talk about hygiene and we talk about bad things that happen. But even in, um, I teach at, at other um, at conferences and stuff, and a lot of times people come up to me and say, well, how do we incorporate this in our university? And I'll say, this is, but we talk about love. Why can't we talk about pleasure and consent? And this is what you aim to have. It's so interesting because mm -hmm. we had this conversation the other day that you know you're you're taught abstinence uh, when you're younger mm -hmm. and no 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 and as uh, especially as and a young woman yeah. and then you enter into a consensual loving mm -hmm. healthy relationship and yep. your all your mind is warped with all of these messages yep. that you learn you have to unlearn things too. Yes, and also these messages of like if you are a couple that can't or doesn't want to have children, well then. What, is sex only for pre you know right. like recreation, procreation, all these things of these messages and fertility also we see a ton of people struggling with fertility and sex becomes not fun. So those there's some of those ways. Um, a lot of times we unfortunately see people that it's rampant having people's um, consent violated. So whether you're in a relationship where you are in a loving relationship, but you have to kind of w awaken your body. Can I ask you, sure. we hear a lot about, um, you know, things that can happen, sexual assault and that sort of thing, but yes. are there things on the lower end that are still, your consent is not being um, asked for or given? Absolutely, there's, I mean, there's so many things. Um, coercion, you know, one of the things with dating right now, um, if you're dating, how can you consent to even a kiss if you're drinking, you know? so that idea of like drinking and consent. So making sure that you can consent to go where you wanna go, do what you wanna do, those kind of things. I'd say it with my employees, they are gonna be annoyed when I say this, but I always say, I will never fire anybody. You will choose to not work with me anymore because right. you violated some consent, right? So it's right. like, that's not, it. so it's a choice. Same as parenting, you know, it's a consequence right. versus their fault. If somebody thinks that they want to talk to their doctor about sexual health, medication. I mm -hmm. think even sometimes people get worried or embarrassed even. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to go about that? Well, you have tips? Yeah, it's really interesting too because I was, uh, I train the doctors and one of the issues that we have with psychiatry residents and OBGYN sometimes too is like they get embarrassed of it too. So the way I just have people is just ask, you know, the same, we, you, you and I were talking about dental health, right? We have a shared, we know the same dentist. So, but why can't you just talk about sexual health? Like people go to dentists when their teeth are healthy to make sure that they're healthy, right? So it's the same kind of thing is you have this, how do you take care of it, right? We were talking about the sense of wonder. 
wonder is when kids are out there peeing outside and they don't care because they're not sexual, right? Right. So it's that same time where that falls and I, their shame happens. So intervening and not having that shame. So asking your doctor because they are trained. Um, most, most doctors are very comfortable with it. If they're not comfortable with it, it's too bad. It's their job. Right. Same as us, you know, we don't, I'd love for people to come in and talk about how much they love their puppies and things like that, but it's my job to hear uncomfortable things. Right, and to so, help them through. Yeah, so asking processes. questions and speaking their language. So if you're going to a medical doctor, you wanna speak in symptoms. What is happening? Do you have pain? Do you have lack of desire? Do you have, you know, any of these things? But also be aware that there's a lot of things that go into mm -hmm. all of your sexual health. So it, you know, where does sex happen? It happens in between your ears. Right. So understanding, you know, where all this stuff, because a lot of people come to us because they want medication and we don't provide medication. And also I want, we like to see what's going on first because there's a lot of things, I, a diabetes, that's one of the main issues people will come in and they don't have, they don't understand the medical consequences. That comes, yes. that comes mm -hmm. into play with that. Pregnancy, things right. like that. Yeah. This is really interesting yeah. and fascinating. Thank you so much for talking Thank to so us about this. Yeah. And Come Pittsburgh has locations in both Lawrenceville and Monroeville. They also offer virtual therapy sessions. If that works better for you, we're gonna have more information on our website, katiekea.com slash talk Pittsburgh. We'll be right back after